Hello everyone, let's bring you up to speed on the project of the Wilder Mira. This is a large-scale restoration project that Mossy Earth is just setting up in the south of Portugal, dedicated to the Mira Basin. And we have already launched two of its sub-projects, you may have heard about them. One is the Rewilding Abandoned Eucalyptus Plantations, it's where I'm at the moment. Those are cut eucalyptus stumps right by the river, that, that's the river Mira. So we're cutting, um, eradicating eucalyptus, which is not a native species in Portugal. And the other sub-project is about safeguarding the endemic freshwater fish species of the Mira Basin, two species in particular that are critically endangered, so the Mira Chub and the southwestern arched mouth nace. They are really at the brink of extinction here. So these are our first two uh, sub-projects. And today we'll just talk about updates of what's been happening here in the Wilder Mirror. So we started the field work for this eucalyptus project in mid-January and it's now almost end of April. And we are concluding the one kilometer of stretch along, of eucalyptus along the river Mira. Uh, there are still some eucalyptus on the other side, but one day. We are now starting on this side and on this plot this was the most sensitive area for the project because it is right next to the riparian gallery and we wanted to preserve as much as possible the natural regeneration. For this we had to uh, resort to a specialized forestry team called Pronativa and they really did a neat job chopping down eucalyptus with minimum impact on the soil and on the surrounding vegetation. So here for example you see there is, this is a Portuguese oak, Quercus faginia, uh, over there there is ash, a lot of Quercus faginia over here, um, Quercus uber, a cork oak, and yeah, these eucalyptus stumps were all cut, preserving all this natural regeneration. Also here a Portuguese oak, over there uh, a cork oak, and there there is still one eucalyptus tree to go. We definitely take much longer in this area because it's sensitive and we need it's a slower work with arborism. But it also happened that this winter it really rained uh, good in Portugal. This is great, especially for the endemic fish project. Definitely not uh, doesn't upset us, but it did delay our works because you cannot be on top of trees with wind, storms, and and uh, a lot of rain. So for now we want to conclude in the next weeks this whole one kilometer stretch then we stop for the summer because of the high uh, wildfire risk it's not good to be using combustion machines in the forest so we stop in that time however during the summer we'll keep on coming here because we need to control now the re-sprouting of the eucalyptus stumps that got cut so eucalyptus is a re-sprouting species and you can see here the brand new re-sproutings when they they come in a bit reddish um, to start and now they are full they smell really good at the moment they are full of oil these uh, juvenile leaves and they are actually very easy to just take out you can do it manu manually when they are this green it's just very easily easy but the whole point is that we want to fully eradicate the eucalyptus, so after we cut, they are re-sprouting and we don't want these re-sprouts to become eucalyptus trees again. So we will control the re-sprouting of all the eucalyptus we cut in any plot. And in this pilot plot, we are going to try to test what is the most efficient method. So we are starting by the river with uh, the simple method of consistent cutting. That means to really come here, now I'm just pulling or ripping and not, don't even need to cut. So we'll come here regularly until the stumps no longer have energy and are no longer re-sprouting. We are dividing this sector to try out different frequencies of cutting. So one will be weekly, another bi-weekly and another monthly. This way we will find out which frequency saves us the most resources and is still effective. Okay. So Jack, how, how has it been working here? Um, it's been challenging, but, but good fun. So yeah, uh, it's quite restricted access with this slope down to the river, so it's been interesting to have to 
keep taking out small amounts of wood so we can keep cutting. With the climbing, it's really been uh, also interesting to cut to measure when we're climbing. So we want to try and cut things here to about 230, 240 to sell. And with the climbing, it's not always you know, so so straightforward, um, but it's it's been good fun. And then either been pulling it out here with the with the tractor and the crane, good old laser doing its doing its job, and also with the with the portable winch. So that's that's been a good tool too. Yeah, it's it's really uh, it's really going well. We're really good, having a good time. So yeah, let's get back to work. Cool. I should also add that through this process we are trying to learn with Pronativa, so the Mossy Earths team, uh, which at the moment it's me, Francisco and João, we are trying to learn with Pronativa these more ecological forestry methods and forestry operations in general. So Pronativa has been really kind to give us some crash courses on, for example, uh, safe handling of chainsaws, um, of the forest winch, and many other useful tips. By the end of cutting down the eucalyptus, we are left with these alternate piles of wood logs that we are shipping for sale, and branches and the foliage that have a lot less value in the market. And we could, they have uh, value as biomass, but we don't want to ship them for biomass. We can use the biomass in our project itself. So we'll make wood chips, basically, and then we will take it upstairs to the driest parts of this hillside to increase the organic matter content. To finish about the eucalyptus project, I would also like to mention that we have a forestry student intern with us and she's helping us to do a more rigorous inventory of the eucalyptus trees and the sellable wood that is coming out of this operation so that we fine-tune this project to have better estimates of the revenue that we can get to cover project expenses, also about calculating the amount of work that will be needed for the cutting operations and everything. We've also we opened a, a volunteering opportunity, an online one, for our members, and uh, we have had enough signups for this opportunity, so that's settled for now. Uh, but it's basically to help us identify animal species, which will be mostly mammals and birds, but who knows what else, caught by the camera traps that we have put on this land uh, one year ago, also in spring. And we do have already some very cute footage to show you, and we're having plenty of nice surprises. Hey everyone, just to give you a quick update on the plant nursery and how are the plants growing. As you can see, since the last vlog, the ash trees have grown quite a lot and also some other trees. We are preparing these plants to restore some riparian galleries. We are intending to um, use them for places that are really, really uh, degraded. So whenever we can in our projects, we'll uh, just assist natural regeneration of the vegetation. But in the more degraded areas, especially riparian galleries, we'll try to plant these trees. And uh, we are estimating that there are around 13,000 ash trees that will grow from these trays. Um, a, bit a bit less uh, with the other trees, but this is just the first seedlings. After we transplant them, we'll do another batch of seeds. We are also collecting willow tree seeds and tamarisk that we're going to plant next. So just to show you, this is a small ash tree that is ready to go to a bigger tray. So when they reach this size, basically, and this, in this density, they have uh, still small roots, so they can uh, be easily transplanted into bigger trays. And uh, they, they, they can be here for a while, 
but we want to move them to bigger trays outside where they can be more adapted to the, the, the climate. So today we had our first uh, volunteer session here in the in the plant nursery with um, local based members of Mossy Earth and we transplanted nine, nine trays of ash tree which is the equivalent to one of those batch trays inside. So as you can see there's a lot of work still coming. We'll try and get these plants ready for the planting season in the autumn. And regarding our fish project, stay tuned for our next vlog since we will bring a lot of news then. Actually, let's hear those news a bit earlier. We're launching a new project concerning aquatic ecosystems and I'll leave it to Flora to describe it to you. Hi everyone, Flora here. And today I actually wanted to talk to you a bit about our new project that we're starting here in the Mira Basin. I'm actually in Milfunch and I don't know if you can see very well, but this is um, the, the place where the Mira River meets the ocean, so it's the, the river mouth, and where we have the core of our estuary. And uh, it's a beautiful place, and as you might have already heard us talk about this estuary, it's very particular, because the influence of the salt water actually goes very far inland, so up to 30, 40 kilometers inland. It goes to about where we're working on the, the eucalyptus project. It just creates a very particular ecosystem and dynamic and yeah it's a very unique place and actually this estuary is considered one of the more um, biodiverse estuaries in Portugal. It's got a very high abundance of species and so the project that we're starting here is a project dedicated to controlling the aquatic invasive species that we have in the estuary and in the river and it's a project that goes hand in hand with the project that we have to safeguard endemic fish species of the Mira. So these are Squalish turgalensis, the Mira, the Mira chub, and Ibero condorstroma almacai, the southwestern arched mouth nays. I hope I got this name right. In the very little habitat that remains for them to survive, especially in the dry season, so during summer, when the river dries and they only have these pools, which are called summer refuges, one of the biggest threats is the presence of invasive species. And we have quite a few of those here in the mirror, unfortunately. I'm not going to name the whole list, but we are starting with control actions dedicated to the most, the one that we consider the most dangerous species for these fishes and for biodiversity in the estuary and in the river, generally speaking. This is the blue crab. This is a crab that has been present in Portuguese waters, mostly on the Algarve since about 2017. And it's started to spread across southern Portuguese waters and it reached the Mira in 2020. But the invasion didn't really settle properly until 2023. So that was when you really started to feel the presence of the species. And this is a, a very dangerous crab. It doesn't have any natural predators here in Portugal, in this river, and it feeds on everything. It feeds on fish, it feeds on bivalves, it feeds on other crabs, and it is a big danger to biodiversity, generally speaking. Um, many papers where this invasion has happened some time ago already, they show how the numbers in their fish, in their crab populations, they have all, they all dipped since the arrival of this invasive species. So we have decided that this is the priority species to target and it is a big threat to these endangered fish species that we want to protect here in the Mira and biodiversity, generally speaking. We'll be talking more about this project very soon because we'll have more uh, happening on this front. Um, so we'll keep you updated. Yeah, I hope this has sparked your curiosity and I can't wait to talk to you more about this project and hopefully show you what we've been up to in the next vlog and I'll see you next time. And on a hopeful ending note I just want to point out that before winter I filmed a vlog over there. I filmed a vlog when the riverbed was completely dry and now we can see it's flowing pretty good. It's looking beautiful. The riverbed is full of water. So what happened this winter, we actually had really good rains, like we hadn't had in maybe 20 years. And everybody in the south of Portugal is uh, pretty 
relieved, happy with this. We are also at most years because we have this um, intention of saving the endemic fish of the Miro Basin and definitely this good fresh water flow is going to help also in controlling aquatic invasive species that benefit from this big disturbance in what used to be the freshwater ecosystems over here. So yes, that's definitely a good uh, thing that we should uh, be celebrating for. And I just wanted to end like this. Stay tuned for the next news. Cheers.